Come over here. Come watch the Bankus show. Come. Ben Bankus. You know Ben Bankus? He's a stand-up comedian that also goes ching chong bing bang a little bit on the internet. Uh, this is uh, the podcast that you're about to watch. It's with me and Chris Skye, and you're going to love it. Chris Skye, he's a Canadian national uh, mental patient slash treasure slash he's hilarious slash pretty much everything he says is comes true, and then it's scary, and all of our lives are just really waiting for um, the end of freedom, I guess. That's what he thinks. So we're, we talk to him about it. Um, I love you guys. This is our def- studio right now. Um, we moved it from my place because of dogs and babies. And that's actually old food that we just we just had that food. I actually your Patreon money paid for that meal for my team that's here. There's Daniel Boardman himself. Um, and Armin, of course, is holding the camera and. uh yeah, you need to listen to the podcast. We have a couple episodes out. This episode's going to be good. The last one was good. And there's a bunch of bonus podcasts on Patreon. So go check out patreon.com slash Ben Bankus. Enjoy this episode. How's it going, Chris? Fantastic. How are you, brother? I'm pretty good. I'm back here in Canada. You're on a, you're on a world tour. Yes, sir. I just got to uh, Manchester, UK a couple of days ago. I started in Canada, as everyone knew. I went all the way through the States, from like the dirty south to the west coast to the northeast. Then I uh, I was uh, in Belgrade, Serbia for about a week. And then I just got to the UK. I'm going to be here till the beginning of October. Then I'm going to be in the Netherlands. Then I'm going to be in Mexico. And then I'm going to be back in Canada for a little bit, unless they try to pull this mandate. Bullshit. And then I'll be heading up to Australia to finish off. Is that like, is this just like you're partying and, and you're wearing shirts like that? Or is it like you're doing speeches for crowds? There's like people coming to see you, right? Of course. Of course, on my free time, I wear my tank tops. I go to the gym twice a day and, and I like to be comfortable. But when I go to my events, I wear whatever's appropriate. If it's outside and it's going to be a 900 degrees, I'll wear a tank top. But now that I'm in England, I probably got to wear a hoodie. There's no sun and it's freezing here, but I got a lot. Yeah, I got events all over England. I got events in Leeds, Liverpool, London. I'm going to be filming a documentary on 15 minute cities in Oxford, England, which is the original 15 minute city, which I think is going to blow everybody's friggin' mind when they see how scary it actually is and how they've been living under that tyranny for a couple of years. I want to talk about Serbia too, because Serbia was a very interesting place. Uh, did you hear a peep about Serbia during the lockdowns? If you think about it. It was Probably never not. It was never in the news. It was never mentioned. And there was very good reason for that. When they tried to lock down Serbia, it lasted about two days before they overthrew the government and forced them uh, with just say no and united noncompliance to relinquish any type of mandates, any type of lockdowns. Serbia never had any any of that. No mandates, no that. lockdowns, no restrictions. They tried it in October 2020 when we were at our peak of fear, and it didn't work. And guess what else they didn't have? They didn't have mass deaths. They didn't have mass destruction of their economy, mass destruction of people's mental health, because they didn't have a pandemic at all. And that's why they were never mentioned, because they didn't have any pandemic measures to mitigate the so-called threat. Yet they didn't have any extra deaths, extra hospitalizations, and they didn't have any of the economic problems that were caused by all the lockdown restrictions. So right. they are a perfect example of how every country should act this time around. Everybody should not comply. Everybody should stick with their neighbors, keep their businesses open, keep going to gatherings, keep seeing their friends and family. And whatever you do, don't put that mask back on your face. Well, I think, I mean, uh, you know, uh, well, I, I, I want to ask a couple questions about y- your personal stuff. But I, I think that, to touch on the Serbia thing, I think it has to do with the fact that they have mostly Serbian people there and they kind of all speak the same language and they all kind of communicate what they should do and how to keep the government in check. Whereas in places like Canada or even the UK, there's a lot of different language barriers. There's a lot of cultural barriers. And that is a barrier to holding the government accountable, which is why the British invented divide and conquer in the first place, in my opinion. 
Um, I was going to say that um, considering you're there, have you tried a turtleneck? Because I know that you're uh, are, do, do you ever scare old pe white people who agree with you when they see you with the tattoos? Uh, most of the time, to be honest, as soon as I love your question, but you make me laugh. Most of the time when older people, especially older women, see my tattoos, they ask what it is. And as soon as I tell them the one on my neck is Archangel Michael, the protector of mankind and the leader of God's army, they're usually <laughs> back to my side. It's not like I got a skull they obviously, cross, so. I could see them get, they, they probably get turned on a little bit because they're like, oh, it's Chris Sky. What's your tattoo? Like, like, it's exciting that you're, le you know, you're, you're, I think you're partly a nucleus of what is, what has been the movement over the last four years because, you know, there's t there are a lot of people who speak out and stuff, but not a lot of people give a shit when they speak out, whereas you do and people do, which is good. And you're traveling and you're doing all these these great things. My question to you is, you know, like you when you talk, that's how I think first thing in the morning. That's like my brain. First thing in the morning, I look at Twitter. I look at X dot com. I see all the bullshit happening. And I'm like in my head, I'm just Chris Sky being like, this is bullshit. Oh, the Serbians. What do we do? But. Like, what do you do to calm yourself down? Like, what do you do to actually enjoy life, relax? Like, do you, like, because it seems like you put a lot of pressure on yourself to be out there and fucking fighting, talking, and, and ranting. And what do you, how do you relax? Well, you know the saying, with great power comes great responsibility. So, like, you, just like you, you have power to reach people with your comedy big time. And that's a responsibility, which I believe you're using fantastically because you don't just go out there and talk shit. You talk about things that matter, things that are relevant to society and things that need to change. And I'm doing pretty much the same thing. So when you're on a mission that has purpose already, that puts you in a better mood. When you're one of the defiant that's going to do the exact opposite of what you're told every day by the government, that also puts you in a great mood when I'm <laughs> it's true. Like even like, even a child doing what they're not doing, what their parent tells them to do, it puts them in a good mood, especially if what their parents told them to do is the wrong thing. Stay in your room because I said so. And then you leave your room. You're going to feel great. It's the exact same thing. When the government says put on a mask or close your business and you give them the finger instead, you're going to feel great. And that's why I try to keep a healthy routine. Even though I'm in a different place, like every other day, I still wake up, watch the sunrise, hit the gym twice a day, keep myself good. And everywhere I go, people don't understand this, but I'll, I'll talk all over the world, but I've never taken a dollar to speak anywhere. So when you have a pure purpose, when you have a clear conscience, when you have true intentions, all of those things combined keep you in a pretty damn good mood. Even when you as, have to as a Jew, I, as a Jew, I have to say that uh, I'm disappointed that you don't, you're not making any money off of this. <laughs> I love you, brother. <laughs> like, how are you paying for the gym memberships? If you no, um, oh. but so, but you're going to gyms like in the UK. You're just going to showing up to random gyms, scaring dudes like happy at seven a.m. and they're like, "Oh, who's this, bro?" And you're just like, "Bro, fuck, I gotta fight the government, bro." It's pretty it's like awful. it's pretty amazing. It's amazing. I, I wish I had that. I wish I got my kicks from working out. Me working out is like, fuck. Is this gonna be done soon so I can go and do something else? Well, you feel like you're getting stronger. You feel like you're doing, you feel like if you create those goals for yourself and say, Hey, I want to make sure I do my cardio this morning. I want to make sure I do my weights at the end of the day. And you actually do it as part of your day. You feel like you accomplished something and you obviously feel better. No matter who you are, if you do some cardio, you're going to feel better after. If you do some weights after, you're going to feel you better. Not, after. Did you not have a period during the last three years where you were depressed or where you felt like you're like, fuck, I don't, I fuck this shit. I'm just going to fucking go to sleep and screw it. There's so many times I felt depressed and that's why I know how that I, and I'm one of the people that seems to be the happiest of all the, like all the time. But during the lockdowns, especially when they had us uh, to the point where they had the checkpoints where they were trying to mandate the, the vaccine passports and they were trying to even tax and start arresting people. It got pretty it got pretty tense. And, yeah, it's hard to stay. It's hard to stay positive, but you have to focus on what you can control, which is all your own decisions. No matter like, look, the government did all that shit. But did that stop me from going on tour? Did that stop me from going province to province to province? I did whatever I had to do, whether I took a private jet, flew a friggin helicopter over their checkpoints 
put my Range Rover on top of a friggin' uh, uh, trailer and dr- drove it across Nova Scotia border. We did whatever we had to do, and that's the whole point. That's what life is. Life is about setting goals and attaining those goals, no matter who's in your way. The government is just another obstacle, and everybody needs to understand. I like, I like how you're like way around the lockdown. Was you're like you're like there was all these issues, so I just spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to fly like i mean do you No, i like, didn't spend any money i didn't spend a dollar people brought in, you on their private jets and stuff like that a hundred percent i got picked up by a private jet from a freedom fighter because they knew exactly what was going on and then when, uh we also took nine separate vehicles like a friggin' relay race and it was one person driving us to the next person driving us to the next person and they were all volunteers we paid for their gas and stuff because they were helping us out if we stopped for food i paid for their food but the guy that flew us on the plane wouldn't take a dollar the guy that picked us up with the helicopter wouldn't take a dollar these were just all freedom fighters that were on the same page and wanted the same thing and that's right. how it always Probably because they were what? worried they would go to jail <laughs> What? <laughs> Is it probably because they were worried because they'd go to jail if they gave you any money? They're like, who? Chris? Who? He was never here. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, well, that, that, no, that, that that's true. But uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But at the same time, they still helped, and that's all that matters. And for me, I found that whenever I need something and my my intentions are genuine. It always happens. Like, just right. to get into the States, I was banned from the United States. A lot of people don't know that. I was banned from the States for over 10 years. Yeah, Why? Tell us about because that. I, had a, I had a medical marijuana license since 2000 and, uh, what is it, like 17 or something? No, wait, even earlier than that. Probably around 2010, I had a medical marijuana license. So because I had that medical marijuana license, that card, it, in the States, I said, oh, so you smoke weed? I go, well, yeah, medically when they give it to me and I go, Oh, well, well that makes you a felon under federal law. So even though I had no criminal record, they decided that they weren't going to let me in that one time. So then I got put on right. a weird list. So I couldn't get a pardon cause I had no criminal record. I couldn't get a waiver cause I had no criminal record. So I was just in some gray area where they would basically just deny me every time I came. So when I had to go there for the tour, I was like, how the hell am I going to get in the country? I need a good way, a good reason. And like everything else, just like with the helicopter, just like with the private plane, I got a phone call five days later from Matt Baker, who works with InfoWars, and says, hey, by the way, uh, there's this big thing coming up called the American Liberty Awards in Texas, and you got nominated in two categories, even though you're a Canadian, and you're the only non-American nominated. So we're going to send you the invitation, and we're going to send you the hotel reservation. The two things I needed to show at the U.S. airport, uh, the U.S. border to get me in. And that's the only reason they let me in. I went to the border from Mexico, Tried to sneak, uh, tried to come in on a bus, and I got stopped at the border. When they scanned my uh, my passport, boom, alarms went off, phones rang. I was arrested, detained for around seven hours. When they found out who I was, why I was going there, they not only let me in, they said, "Good luck. I hope you win your award." And I did, by the way. That's cool. What's interesting is that there's a lot of people who are, um, you know, f- I guess pro freedom or or whatever that are that have a lot of money getting back to the fact that people give um you know hook you up with free rides and stuff like that which you know honestly i am blessed to have some fans that have a bunch of money they just take me golfing and shit they haven't taken me on any private jets yet (laughs) but uh no it's interesting because the lower your income i feel the more likely it is that you're just going to go along with the government or that you won't care because you're almost not affected as much like if you're already making minimum wage and then the government's like oh we're going to close the dollarama or the tim hortons or whatever minimum wage place you work at and then say we're going to give you the equivalent amount of money to do nothing and you know you have no uh you know you have no assets you have no investments so those people just don't give a shit there's like thank you government for Give me some a time off from the. Uh, that, that's how I see it because, but there's a certain amount of money that you start making where you're like, this is bullshit. Or age, age is a factor. Like if you're younger and you're making less, uh, like minimum wage, you you still have the opportunity to make more money in your life. Those people are pissed off. But I feel like yeah, a lot of the new immigrants who and and people who are just kind of lower income or new Canadians just were, they got fucked the hardest by the lockdowns and by COVID because they just didn't care. But they didn't realize they were getting fucked over so much. But my thing now is that Canada, what we never talk about when I was in 
university and high school, we always talked about uh, demographic transition model and social mobility and the idea that, you know, a healthy first world country has social mobility. The idea that you can go to any high school and do well and then move up in that country's social stat class, like through the class system, essentially, and be able to be mobile. And I think that this whole situation that's happened over the last three years, four years is definitely taking away from that and it's taking advantage of poor people and then those are the people who are the maddest at you or me are people who are like on welfare who are just like you're a piece of shit and it's like no we're just i'm just trying to protect my way of life whereas you didn't really have a way of life before this so this is this is all just new to you and, and you're just okay with it is, is what i say and my question to you is then uh like why do you think like, do you, do you agree with that, one? And two, like, why do you think so many kind of losers and just kind of, you know, people with, with very low income and, and very low goal, like no goals, which is something you talked about, why do they gravitate gravitate towards follow or, you know, being part of this government agenda, being part of these these big schemes that are being created by these massive corporations and governments and stuff? Why, why are they so susceptible to it? Well, first of all, you're 100 percent correct. Let's just start there. And the reason that the people on lower income are more susceptible to it is because if you're working five days a week to make a certain amount of money and then the government says, why don't you just stay home and I'll pay you the equivalent? Who the hell is going to work? Right. Obviously, would, yeah. would you work? Would you work if you're working at Walmart every day, five days a week? And then the government says, no, just stay home. I'll pay you just the same amount. Why would you work? You'd have to be an idiot to want to work especially if they're going to mandate mass and all the rest of it. It's even more incentive for you not to work. So then that takes a huge chunk of the population and buys their compliance, literally buys their compliance. So already yeah. they have a lead. Then you have the whole other segment of the population that are simply pussies. They want to go along to get along. And there's a very good experiment that proves this phenomenon. I don't know if you've ever heard of it before, but the way it works is, you get five guys or five women, whatever, five people in a room, four people are in on the experiment. One person's being tested. A professor goes up on a chalkboard, draws three lines on the board, all of them distinctly different in length to the naked eye, completely different line A, B, and C. He then draws a corresponding line on the other side. That's easily it, by anybody's uh, by anybody that looks at it can easily see that that line is equivalent to line B, the second line. He then asked the five participants which line that line is really like. Even though we all know the answer is B and it's clear as day, clear as one plus one is two, the first four people that are all part of the experiment will lie and say it's C, even though line B is like this long and line C is like this long and it's completely a different size. Guess how many times, what percentage of time the fifth person will go along with the blatant, obvious lie just because they want to be part of the group? 100% or? It's almost 70%, Ben. Almost 70% of people will literally look at a line that's two inches long, a line that's six inches long, and say that they're the same size just because the other four people in the experiment lied and said that. That's, that's how powerful the manipulation is. So you have a percentage. That's why all the girls think my dick's big. <laughs> well, I think they think it's big because they're used to you talking with a Chinese accent, so they think you're secretly Asian. And then when they see it, they're like, holy crap. <laughs> oh, that's a big thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> No, what, whatever you just said, if I felt like it was like a Jordan Peterson speech done with a Chris Sky AI voice, because it was it was crazy, it was very insightful. But no, I I, I understand that people are, uh, you know, easily susceptible to all this stuff, and um, you know, like I said, people with more money have more to protect, they have more to lose, and I think that that's, and then the poor people are just like, well, screw you, and then in Canada you have Jagmeet being like, well, we need a tax, we need a greed tax, and we need to make sure nobody can make over X on you know, and, and what poor people don't realize is they just think, oh yeah, we're gonna tax billionaires, but it's like, no, if you go, go and create a business and you make over $100,000, you're gonna be like, what the fuck is this? As soon as you make any money in Canada over 100 grand, you're, you're taxed so hard that it's like almost, 
it, it really just feels like the government is essentially incentivizing you to make as little money as possible and be as little of a part of this country as possible, a little as little of a part of the fabric of the society and have as little power as possible. Because that's another thing is if you take away people's money, especially independent people, not people who just, you know, work for Walmart or some CEO at some uh, some big multinational corporation that's going to do whatever he's told because he makes five, six million dollars a year to do that. But guys who make 10, 20 million dollars a year with their own business, that's the real threat um, to to the to, to this this kind of control mechanism that I think anybody who's in, anybody who's independent, you don't have to make 10, 20 million a year. If you're that mom and pop shop on the corner and you're only making a hundred grand a year to keep your family fed and keep your house, uh, keep your house and you're running a small business. Those are the number one threat. Those are the people because there's enough of them still that if they come together, they can cause a ruckus for the government. So those independent people are the ones the government wants to attack the most. That's why every COVID restriction is designed to destroy small business. That's why every climate change restriction, 15 minute city, global carbon allowance, removing vehicle traffic from the roads. Every one of those things is designed to destroy small business because once your business is destroyed and they put you on, serb which then they can put you on universal basic income they own your ass when you're not feeding yourself and the government is feeding you every month they own you they can tell you everything they want to do and the other thing you said with the people that do have the money the people that are making a few million bucks or have a few million bucks guess what they're gone bro thousands and thousands and thousands of millionaires have made an exodus from canada they brought their businesses gone. They take their bank accounts with them. And those millions and millions of dollars are gone from Canada forever. Those people aren't coming back. They're going to places like Mexico or other places where they're going to actually have a future. Canada is going down the tubes and fast. And I saw the degradation. Like when I went to the States 10 years ago versus now, 10 years ago, I used to make fun of the States. I was like, you guys suck. Canadians are way better and Canada is way better. Now it's the complete opposite. Even Vermont, the state that wins the award for being most like Canada, is still way better than Canada. Canada they have much more of a first world vibe, just in the the you know uh, the, you know the the public works in terms of you it's know, not the even the first world vibe. The, the 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 facilities, the potential, the potential to be socially mobile and you know invest in a business at a low cost and 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 get high returns. Canada, everything is you know very expensive to start um and nobody's really making that much money and like you said a lot of the richest people have left the country but i guess my question is for canada like what like are you going to go that way too and just be like screw it i'm gonna leave do you feel like you have some allegiance to kind of make it still good here like i feel like i have a bit of that like i'm trying to go to the u.s now but um you know i have a bit of like you know i i like that providing canada someone like you know you're a celebrity in canada uh, you know beyond canada as well but you know you're providing like there aren't a lot of people that canada can go yo that's our guy he talks about our stuff and 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 that's what you know that doesn't help us either and that's from decades of the government funding the worst possible art and the worst possible uh comedy and the worst possible music and all the good music and good art just goes to the states like you know the best artist drake bieber whatever the most popular artists that is um you know they just become successful and go to the states they never all the people that canada is giving grant money to are terrible in my opinion most of them um like most of the artists so but do you feel an allegiance to stay and and fight or are you like you know what i'll fight from afar i'll go to mexico i'll go to croatia or serbia or hungary or one of these countries that that you feel more safe in politically not just yeah not just politically legitimately like how do you feel safe if you're in canada and you're on lockdown and they're telling you you can't go here without a mask can't do this meanwhile if you go to a country like serbia you're just living like it's normal it's very tempting obviously i feel an allegiance to canada obviously i have opportunities where i can go virtually anywhere in the world i i did get a mexican residency that way i had the peace of mind that if they did try to put some travel mandates and stuff back at least i could fly into mexico and then from mexico fly anywhere in the world but do i feel an allegiance to canada 100 percent 
percent. I lived there, I grew up there, I was born there, I lived all over the country, traveled all over the country. I know so many amazing people over there. So do I'm you think there is a fix for it? Like for instance, if Pierre Paul Olivier, Poliev, I mean, I don't know if you, you probably don't fully trust him, which is understandable, but obviously you probably share the, the, the notion that he's better than Trudeau. But Pierre yeah. Polyev or or is there if he comes in and changes a whole bunch of things and we slow down immigration and we, you know, I think it's still really hard because we're not going to be able to incentivize people to have families or kids. They just want to, you know, a lot of the young uh, women in, in the country just want to party and be they have no idea what's going on with the government, no idea what's going. And I, I got in trouble for saying this on the Real Toronto podcast that I said that more women uh, or more men stood up against the lockdown than women and all the women who are freedom fighters were mad at me that and they a lot of them unfollowed me i used to like ben Pankas, and then he said that but it's like well but i'm right though because you're not most of the women uh most of the women are in there you know are the young women who are at university and they just were like completely compliant um so and you're, not got wrong, you're, not, you're not wrong on a grand scale there probably was if you if you look at the actual numbers a few more men standing up than women but when it came to the freedom movement i have to say that a lot of the best and most tenacious organizers were probably females and they were right. the ones that first got into this fight because for them it was out of necessity a lot of the, the best female uh, freedom fighters were mothers so they were standing yeah. up for their children and that's the most important thing we got to mention because the children are the unifying factor for all of our factions to come together for this fight because the children are the number one target whether we're talking about covid climate change or this nasty lgbt disgusting agenda it's all about the children they want to destroy the children they want to convert uh, confuse the children they want to pervert the children and they want to become the number one influence in the children's lives instead of the parents that way they can have all these little brainwashed children grow up to believe in covid believe in climate change believe that they can choose their own gender of 70 million genders and all the rest well, of this line um, i mean that's i mean that's what i mean a lot of the comparisons during covid were like this is like nazi germany in the 30s and people are like that's racist against this and that and um you know but th there is that comparison because you're basically just convinced and, and i had that conversation with a woman uh who basically said to me like well they're gonna you know they're gonna learn about it anyway or something like that i'm like yeah not in the context of like having to believe it um, yeah. you know so it's like yeah you can learn about it and be like oh yeah that happened but not like oh i have to fucking believe this shit and when i explained to her i'm like well do you think that the ki nazi kids in germany like did they just grow up hating jews no matter what or were they taught that in school like and so you know i I guess I have a question for you because I know that you did have a controversy where you were like the Holocaust, something, something didn't exist, or you denied the no, numbers or something like Holocaust, that, or it was not as bad. I, I forget what, what was it. You tell me. Tell all me. I said about the Holocaust was, as somebody who was very moved by it, I actually went to Germany to study the Holocaust and spent weeks in Germany going to concentration camps and talking to Holocaust scholars all of them exclusively Jewish and all of them had studied the Holocaust for longer than I had been alive. They were all older men. They were all in their sixties. And I asked a fabled question to each and every one of them. How many people do you believe died in the Holocaust? Cause we hear the number of 6 million over and over. And anybody who questions it is absolutely demonized and destroyed. And to me, it makes no sense because in war, how the hell do you know how many people died in war? It's almost impossible, especially at those times. So the numbers that I heard from these people ranged from 500,000 all the way up into the millions. But two answers that stood out to me among these Holocaust scholars that spent their entire lives studying this one subject. The did two they also have neck tattoos. No, they did not. They, they did have very thick glasses, though. <laughs> so they, they, you could tell they did a lot of reading and a lot of studying on this topic. And the two answers that stood out to me were the most were, we will never know how many people actually died. And the second answer I heard from one of these scholars was, anybody who tells you they know is lying to you. That's all I said. I said that why can't we question the, the number of six million when Holocaust scholars that have dedicated their entire lives to it cannot come up with a number. And I also pointed out that the same organization, it was an organization that came up with the number of 6 million. Their original estimate 
was 18 million dead Jewish people in World War II until it was pointed out by society that there weren't even 18 million Jewish people on the planet. So then they just revised the number from 18 million down to 6 million and made it illegal for anybody to question that number so they wouldn't get embarrassed again. That's basically what really happened. They might have been they might have been just calling all the gays and the trans and the other people Jews to potentially and the, yeah, and, yeah. The, and the Romanies. But I mean, I, I don't even think that that's like, uh, you know, like I think part of the way that they know how many people died was just because they like they had records of uh, who didn't come back to their homes after uh, after after the war. Right. And I think but that's then you also have- forget that the, uh, right after the war. In 1945, end of 45, they had a little uh, declaration that turned half of Palestine into a country called Israel. And then within a year, 1946, Israel all of a sudden had 6 million people, predominantly all of them Jewish. So where did those 6 million people come from? Did they just come from the sky? Or they must have come from other parts of Europe where they fled World War II and resettled in a place now called Israel where uh, you have Tel Aviv, which is still, by the way, not the largest Jewish community in the entire world. Do you know where the largest Jewish community in the entire world is? I think it's like by Florida, numbers? Or Florida. Or New, New York, York City. Something. New York City. And that's why once I, I, I made a joke online and I called it Jew York City, and people are like, oh, my God, that's crazy. That's anti-Semite. You're such a bad person. I said, no, I said that because New York has the most number of Jewish people by population than anywhere else in the world, even more than Tel Aviv, and uh, Jerusalem combined, to be honest. Yeah. So anyway, well, I, I mean, just- I don't really have an opinion on like how many Jews died. Oh, I know. I know that my grandparents were Holocaust survivors. And I mean, that's you know, it is what it is. They 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 fucking survived. They they, you know, in, in very miraculous and courageous ways. And, um, you know, I think that people like it, it, all, all of this history and stuff is meant to kind of confuse people, too. In, in and terms divide of, people. Well, because but, you know, for for your sake, you know, if uh, you know, you're arguing that, hey, we're heading towards another. Like, I think that we're actually heading towards a more like like people are hating on Jews, obviously, now again. And there's a lot of people who are on the right and who are part of the anti um, you know, all this stuff, LGBT, anti-COVID, vax, emissions, and they see the Jews as being part of it, which, you know, they are because a lot of Jews are at the top of these massive companies. And then people go, oh, that's conspiracy. Jews are in control. It's like, well, or just like who else wants to do it? Do you want to do it? Do the, is there, is there an Indian Uber Eats guy who wants to be the CEO of uh, fucking whatever? But, like, I get how there's really crazy circles. But then there's cr- tons of Jews who are also on your side being like, yo, fuck uh, this, fuck, the, fuck those Jews. That's why, that's, why, that's why the division is ridiculous. I have nothing against Jewish people at all. And most of the Jewish people are my fans because most of the Jewish people have nothing to do with this scam. Are there evil Jewish people? Of course. Are there evil Catholic people? Of course. Are there evil Muslim people? Of course. Are there evil atheists? Of course. There's good and bad in every religion. Religion is irrelevant. But, but, the, but, but the Jews are the worst. <laughs> you fuck you. There's no, there's no Catholic. Uh, well, I guess they have. Yeah, the Catholics did some, did some stuff. But they, they never, they never had an island. They just had, they just had the church. They had the basement of the church, the catacomb. The I don't know Catholics what they were doing. have done some pretty friggin' disgusting things throughout history. Everybody has done really disgusting things in the name but of they religion. Need a, but they need to learn from the Jews. Excuse. If you're gonna fuck kids, get an island first. That's yeah. what you have That's to do. Or uh, or or apparently we have to indoctrinate children that they can be seventy five different genders, choose their pronouns, and tell parents they're not allowed to know what their kids are anymore. Yeah, I mean that's a huge issue, and I think that people are very upset about that uh, in general, and you know don't know what to do about it. Like I'll do comedy and I'll make jokes about, and it'll sometimes if it's not my audience, it's just random audience. They they agree with me. But they're like actually scared. Like last night I got a huge laugh because I'm like, you guys actually agree with me. That's why you're not laughing. And then they laughed because they're like, you're right. We're scared. We're You're actually scaring us. Like when you talk to people who aren't there to see you and they're like on the fence or maybe just haven't heard what you said or believe what you say, but haven't heard you say it or heard anybody say it. And then they hear you say it and they're like, I'm fucking scared. 
Now yeah. I'm scared because he's right. And holy shit, we just let this shit happen. And what the fuck is the consequence of this? And and then, you know, how do they uh, what, what do they say? Oh, well, you know, just don't have kids. It's hard. It's so awful. So don't have any. And a lot of women, uh, young women uh, who are apolitical uh, are just not having children. Right. And they're just like, oh, it's, in, you know, and a lot of guys don't want kids because they don't want the responsibility. And then the women don't want kids because they, they, they basically it's about a responsibility thing. And now we have this new excuse of, oh, the economy's awful, so you shouldn't have kids. Oh, my God, have you seen what people I, – I, I talked about this. It's like, do you realize how much worse the world was 100 years ago and people were having kids? Like, you know, they were way poorer and it was – you know, there's no communication and there was no electricity everywhere and internet and all this stuff, and they were having kids. And now we have all these amazing things, and people are like, I don't want to have kids because I don't want the responsibility – to have to fucking yeah, it's, all, it's all part of a propaganda campaign. They even had in Vancouver, they even had the ads at the bus shelter telling everybody to stop climate change and have no more kids. Like it's literally an agenda from the top. I down. saw that. I saw that one in Denmark. I, was that also in Vancouver or something? They but literally it had it in Vancouver. It looked like a CCP ad on a bus station telling everybody to protect the planet and only have one child. Like China's one was child. It, was it white? Was it white kids or Indian kids? I can't remember. It's a good question. And probably white kids. Because you know what? You know, you know that diversity. And, and let's talk about that for a second. How the hell does diversity even get away? Diversity is only in white majority countries, and it always means less white people. Meanwhile, white people are already with the smallest minority on the planet. There's like more of virtually everything else than white people, if you categorize them by Asians or, or Middle Easterns, et cetera. And like, imagine going to a Gians, country. But... Um, yeah, imagine going to a country like Korea and saying, "Oh no, we need diversity. There's too many Koreans here." Would that fly? Absolutely I, not. I agree with it. <laughs> well, let's try it. Let's go to one of these other countries, any country that doesn't have a majority of white people, and tell them that their country needs diversity and it means less of their ethnic majority until their ethnic majority in that country You're becomes right. a minority. You're right, but that's because white people are more likely to be mentally ill, I think. Um, and No, it's because white people throughout history are always most likely to fight back against their oppressors. That's the reality. That's why you they are trying the to destroy reality? all the white nations, because white people like to be independent. If you go to Asia, look at China. Are they independent or are they slaves? They're the most slave-like in the entire world, and now they're trying to model us all after China. If you look at the Middle East, they always had them warring within each between each other so the governments could take control over them. But when you go to a place like Europe, you had independent nations that traded with each other, that even fought wars together, and that's why they need to destroy them. Well, that's because exactly what we talked about at the beginning about Serbia and why they were so adamant. Per about exactly. That's a perfect example. Because they have a they have a hegemony and, you know, and people will accuse me or you or whoever says these things of like, you're racist. That means you don't No, It just means that if everybody is the same culture, then it's easy and speaks the same language. It's easier to be, go, hey, I don't like this. You don't like this. Let's not let this happen. Whereas here. There's just this vibe. But I remember walking around the annex when I lived there and when lockdown happened and going up to all these white people and being like, this is bullshit. What the f like for day one of lockdown, I was losing my mind. I'm like, are you fucking serious? And I would say to these old white people, why are you allowing this to happen? And they go, well, I, what you want me to die? So as much as it is the, you know, maybe divide and conquer, a lot of it's this this old white people vibe of like, I matter more than you. Let's ruin the economy so I don't die. I'm e they're easily susceptible to fucking propaganda. They don't know, you know what anything it comes down about to? media. You know what it really comes like, down when, to? I, when I was in university, they still taught about like critical thinking. And I was they were like, don't anything you see on TV. Don't believe it. Any we learned that we I took a film course. Where it was all about watching documentaries and going. They were wrong. I'd write an essay about why this guy's completely wrong. And it's just documentaries about you know, dol why the dolphin hunting and shit or what, what, whatever it was. And you go, well, here's the bias. Here's how he's biased or here's how she's biased. Now that we, they don't talk, bias is a dirty word. You know, uh, you know, if you say, well, is Trudeau's bias? You go, oh, oh, like, obviously he is. Obviously he's attempting to, in my opinion, be some sort of dictator. Uh, he, you know, he, he 
is doing it through legal means by basically taking advantage of the Canadian, um, you know, f what I don't know if we have a, we don't have a constitution, but just taking advantage of our how our we government actually works. Have a constitution. Nobody really knows that, but if you look it up, we do have a constitution, and it's supposed to be the actual law of the land. But legally, they try to say the charter, which they wrote right. because the government has control over it, replaced our constitution. But legally, we do have a constitution in Canada. I just found that out myself. And when, I'm going back to what you said about uh, the hedge, the hegemony, and the homogeneous society. It really comes down to one thing. Places like Serbia, they don't just have homogeneous society where they can, uh, where they all have the same language. More importantly, they have the same values, family values. So when they see things happening to their neighbor, they know what's going to happen to them. They feel and they come together. In Canada, it's every man for themselves. When I went there to speak in Toronto, when I went back to Toronto after a long absence, I got there on a day where a woman literally died on the street. She was dead on the street corner and it took over 10 hours before somebody even stopped to notice that she was dead to call for somebody to come get her. People literally just stepped over her for 10 hours straight. You don't, like, you don't think that's, I mean, parts of Europe are like that though as well. Like, I mean, if you go to like Bulgaria or something, they'll fucking, some guy will just hit a woman in this, with his car and be like, this and just like drive away. But you know, I, I get what you're saying. And I mean, even Serbia is like, yeah, it's family values until you go to a nightclub and you have sex with five Serbian chicks and for 400 bucks or whatever. But I, I'm, just, I'm just saying that, you know, everybody, every country has their dark side or dark. Yeah, their dark side. But like the big like the big issue with Canada is that nobody's on the same page, even like and family values too. aside in Serbia, whether you have family values or you want to be, you know, you, you want to be a player or a hoe or whatever you're still like fuck the lockdowns fuck all this shit whereas here it's like does you know everybody's split and so, because it's because it's canada and canada is a place where everybody grew up going everything's fine the government knows what they're doing they're protecting us they're making sure that we're okay so that's why it's so easy for a country like canada and you know, even countries like the U.S. who they have similar, a lot of people have similar feelings there, especially the left-leaning people. No, I can tell you um, right now, the U.S. is nothing like Canada. Over there, the people have way more balls and way more follow-through. The only reason they didn't have a trucker convoy like we did, so they didn't have to. Well, they were watching our trucker convoy on TV laughing while they're eating their apple pie and have their shotguns and guns on their lap, thinking about their Constitution, their First Amendment, and their Second Amendment and how it protects them. Every single person in the U.S. that challenged the lockdowns, challenged the mandates, whether it was a person, a business, or even a government entity, they all won. Even the TSA. They stopped the TSA suit and said, oh, sorry, we can't have masks on the TSA anymore. What happened in Canada? They, the people are still fighting all the fucking bullshit. Because over here, we don't have a constitution, like you said, that protects us. We have a stupid charter of rights that they ran roughshod over. So we had to fight harder than Americans. And unfortunately, Americans have more balls than Canadians and more follow-through than Canadians. I'll be completely honest. I got to see all over the states, and I made a lot of meaningful connections. And over there, I got the vibe that if they tried to pull that shit, Americans will pull out their guns and they will go and they will round up people like Fauci and they'll friggin' shoot them. It's that simple. They'll do it. I mean, they They're want to, but like I, I mean, to play devil's Americans advocate. Really, but Ben, it's true. Americans yes. will really yes. do that. But to I'm play devil's Canadian advocate, if the American army or something were to come, you know, down on the population, then even if they were fighting them, it would be a, a pretty tough fight if they had tanks versus like uh, even AR-15s. And I, but I totally understand what you're saying. And even just the thought of them having some retaliation or the citizens having some retaliation first creates of all, a first way of to all. keep people in check. And that's what Trudeau wants to take away where, you know, here it's, oh, now it's handguns are illegal. And then these guns are illegal. And, you know, and even if you take your gun anywhere, you get arrested and, you know, uh, but where are all the crimes happening? They're all happening with illegal firearms. So. 100%. When I was in Colorado, I was out with I was out with businessmen in suits and they all had their guns on their hip. No, no yeah. one was scared. No one ran for their life. If that was in Canada, just the mere sight of a gun on someone's hip, a businessman in a three piece $5,000 suit would prompt 911 calls and prompt an emergency lockdown and all this other garbage. That's how Canadians are so pussy. Canadians are the biggest pussies on planet Earth. And that's why we have the worst lockdowns because our men are fucking pussies. You can look at me. You can call me names. The reality is 99% of you wouldn't say it to my face 
because you're fucking pussies. And you know, I kick the shit out of you. And that's the reality. Canadians know they're pussies. They don't even pretend to be strong. They just shut their mouth and do as they're told because they don't even want the confrontation. And that is why Canada is falling so much further than these other countries. It's really that simple. And now what did Trudeau just do that's going to put the nail in the coffin? First of all, we just had a little study that proved how 75 cents of every dollar Canadians make is already taxed from them. So now you have 25 cents left for every dollar you made in Socialist Canada. And what did Trudeau just announce? To create food security, he's going to tax the grocery stores. He's going to tax them because, you know, Taxing the grocery stores is going to somehow make food more affordable. The grocery stores aren't just going to pass those taxes on to the people that are buying the food. Oh, no, no. They're just going to absorb Trudeau's tax, and then they're going to make food prices cheaper. Just like with Meta and all the news, when Trudeau said, oh, you're going to have to pay us or you can't put the news on there anymore. And then he started yelling at everybody saying, I can't believe they're not putting the news on anymore. Because you told them they couldn't unless they paid you. Now you're telling Canadians that you're going to give them food security and bring down food prices by taxing the food producers. It's the most ridiculous thing. And he can literally say that. It's literally I mean, like it's ridiculous, but it's also it, genius from their part. If they're trying to make Canada into a communist fascist oh, country, it's literally the perfect blueprint. And another thing they're doing now is like the new home buyer incentives that they do. At least I saw one in Ontario where it's essentially, yeah, the government will help give you a down payment, but then you're going to owe them when you sell the house, the equivalent percentage or whatever of what that down payment it was, you know, they're, you're going to have to pay them more than what they gave you at the end of the time it, 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 and they get an equity stake in the home. And now the government, the government's basically done that with, and it, tell me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that with all of these locked, uh, you know, the, when shit was locked down and the comp, the com companies had to take money from the government to stay alive, that basically made them indebted to the government. And basically like the government just bought everybody's business. And it's like, here's two hundred fifty k for your you're 100% you're right. And the reason the government did that is because they want to destroy all the business sector, small business sector. But if they destroyed it all at once, number one, it would be too obvious. And number two, it would have such an impact on the economy that the people would have no choice but to revolt and remove the tyrants. So they did it in a way to kill about one third of the businesses and put another one third of the businesses into a huge amount of debt to the government. So now when we can have the next round of lockdowns, they ensure that the next 30 percent of businesses will go down. And then by that time, we've already lost two thirds of the businesses in Canada. And for people that don't know, small business make up 97 percent of all the businesses in Canada and 70 percent of all the jobs in Canada. So the idea here is to absolutely cripple our economy and put so many people out of work and so many people on serve that the next logical step is a universal basic income. That is why he wants your groceries to be so expensive you can't afford them. So you have no choice but to go to daddy government and say, give me some money so I can buy these groceries. And then as soon as you get their money from them, now, all of a sudden, you have to go on your biometric digital identity. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to need your vaccine passport. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to need to be up to date on your flu shot, your RSV, your COVID. Do you ever, do you ever, um, like, do you, do you ever stop for a second and think, I hope I'm wrong, or maybe I'm wrong, and that would be good? Or are you just like, fuck, I'm not wrong. This sucks. I'm totally right. We're screwed. What the fuck? Well, like, is there ever I, a moment I, where I, you're I like, never, maybe I'm wrong? I would say I wish I was I said I wish I was wrong, but I know I'm not wrong. But I also never say, oh, God, we're screwed. In reality, I know we're going to win. Inevitably, we win right. every single day. It's more, more of a decade. It's just more like a, I don't think Canada is going to get away. Like, I don't think I, I don't think Trudeau is sitting there going, how do we make the country communist or how do we make the country fascist per se? But they're going, how do we? Like, I, I'm, I don't know, actually. Is I think it you're that? Wrong. The question is, I is it that? Doing, I think they're doing exactly that. How do we make the country more communist and give the government as much control as physically possible over these people's lives? That's exactly or, what they're doing. Or That's are they going, or are they just stupid? Or are they just really stupid? Or Because, no. I mean, I'm just playing devil's advocate here, but I'm asking the question because I go back and forth sometimes going, are they just stupid and they're following 
like the 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 U the, like the above yeah. them, which is the UN or whatever, which is like the government for the governments, right? Like the WHO. They're not and the, stupid. They rather have you believe they're stupid than sinister. A stupid person, right. you're you're gonna forgive. A stupid person, you're not gonna pay attention to. But if they're and you're not gonna hold them responsible. But if you know that they're doing everything on purpose and it's cold, calculated, and sinister, well, then you're gonna want to go to their house, drag them out of there, and put them in jail. And so they want you to believe that they're stupid. But in reality, we all know, and anybody can verify this by simply going to their websites, the World Economic Forum agenda is communism for the globe. They want one organization to make laws, one organization to distribute. Is it communism to. or is it fascism? Or what I think it is, is a new thing that we don't have a word for. Because when fascism first happened, they weren't just like, oh, it's fascism. Because the guy who started it, was Mussolini and it was because there was a group called the, he was part of the fascisti and so it wasn't just apparent like right away like oh this ideology is fascism it wasn't until like after or like you know into the war where people you know I believe uh, right that where they're like this is or, or where where Nazis started saying we're fascist where it was this this actual thing and what I'm saying right now is that it's different than the last round of these when when these ideologies pop up where where they kind of labeled them and they were like, hey, we're communists. Let's be communists. Yay. Now it's no, 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 no. We're not communists. No, 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 no. We're not fascists. We're dem democratic. This is a democracy over and over. No, it's a, the, it's a the lie. Reality, whereas before they would tell you the truth. And so right reality, now, I don't know what we're in. It's like some it's a hybrid of a human monkey hybrid. It's a hybrid well, of uh, <laughs> communism, fascism. You know all these different isms into one thing that they're using to fuck it's you over as hardcore as they can. That's what I think. It's, but. it's very simple. You're 100 percent correct in what you said, but the reasoning behind it is just a little bit off. And I can explain very simply. You're right. We have elements of capitalism, fascism, socialism, and communism. Why? Because it's a friggin' cycle. You start with capitalism, where everybody is working with each other cooperatively. There's government, there's corporations, and everybody's working independently. And then slowly fascism kicks in because as the corporations make money, now they can start influencing the government. And when you have the corporations with too much money working together with the government to either control industries or destroy their competition, now we have fascism. Once fascism takes hold, which is basically capitalism with all kinds of corruption, now the government starts using the power of the corporations to enrich themselves and expand their power. So now fascism slowly becomes socialism because as the government gets bigger and more powerful and keeps growing, it takes more money from the economy. It takes more control from the people. It takes more money in taxes. And slowly socialism will take 50 percent, then 60 percent, then 70 percent. And then you start seeing the communism come in. Because as the government takes more and more of your money, now they have to give you more and more of your basic necessities. And it slowly turns from socialism to communism. And then once it becomes communism, that's where the government takes everything, where the people suffer and die and mass murder. And then we have a revolution and it starts all again from capitalism. It's the same thing that's happened in every single country throughout history. It's just that people, the vast majority of people, simply do not understand the economic systems, how they're intermittently linked, and how one leads to the next. And how capitalism is the far one end of the spectrum, communism is the other end of the spectrum. But in order to go from capitalism to communism, you got to go capitalist to fascist to socialist to communist just like you can't go from friggin' masks all the way to vaccine passports but it's i think that they, they they know that too right like the governments know that there's a cycle so they the, but that's why i think they're trying to make it into this hybrid kind of thing which i think china kind of had that model for that where yeah we're capitalists but we're also communists but we're also fascists but we're also this but we're so because then it it does stall that cycle because the, if if people were as smart as they were then, they would have not put up with the lockdowns. They would have not. They, all this stuff wouldn't have happened. But because people are dumber and they can like you can live your life in Canada as whatever you want. You can live your life in Canada as capitalist and make your money and have your offshore accounts and do your thing and, and still be rich and not have to pay that much tax. 
Or you can be, live life in Canada as a communist. You can have no money. You can be on welfare. You can basically live like UBI already exists. You know, you can uh, have, you know, have the government, your kids are going to government daycares and this and that. Or you can have it, you can live like it's fascist. Like you can live in Canada and a lot of these Western countries like it's whatever it, whatever. Yes, like but, the key you're missing, ben, but the key you're missing, Ben, is every single year, more and more people get pushed into the communism category. And eventually you get to the point where the vast majority of people are in the communism category. Now your country is communist. That's exactly what they're doing every Do you single think year. The environment people, stuff. Do you think the environment stuff? Because like I like okay, we sometimes I just stop random people on the street and say things to them because I'm a little bit mentally ill. But I I said something to some guy who was walking, we were having a cigarette, and I was like, uh, "Hey, just, we were talking about cars." I was like, "Do you do you what car do you have?" And the guy was like, "I don't have a car." And I was like, "Do you you what's your favorite car?" And he was like. I don't have a favorite car. I hate cars because they're bad for the environment. And he was just this little loser guy. And you could tell that he was definitely like believed in tons of communist stuff. And like, there's all these, like, I, I agree with you that more and more people are becoming communist, but like, there's no end to that because those people have the personality of somebody that like, they, you know what I mean? Like, they're not like, yeah, I got to make money and get women and, have a good life and drink good wine and smoke nice cigars. No, they're just like, no, well, I, my existence in its own is actually ruining the environment. So I don't like, so those that, are the people, that, those are the people that are irrelevant. Those are the people that don't matter. They're never but going they to matter. matter. But, but those are the people that are a barrier to the country being a hundred percent, a hundred percent. They're the enablers, but at the same time, they're the bottom of the food chain. They're the useless idiot. They're the useless idiots that are going to be the first on the chopping block. So when we go through an inevitable round of lockdowns again, and we go through another round of suffering, all those people that you're, that you just imitated, those are the ones that are going to suffer the most. And then they're the ones who are probably happen? the most susceptible to suicide. That's right. And stuff like That's that. right. And then what's going to happen when you get rid of all the weak people and there's only strong people left, they're not going to be able to pull that shit. So that's why we need to have, that's why I kind of welcoming another round of this in a way, because if you haven't got strong enough yet to reject it, then you deserve everything that's coming to you. Because they can put all the lockdowns there. It's not going to affect me at all. I probably won't even come back to Canada until the lockdown's off. So it's not going to stop me from living my life. It's not going to destroy my business. But all the idiots that are trapped there because they don't have the means to go away and they're going to comply because they're too stupid or too weak not to, well, surprise, they're going to deserve everything they're going to get. When their life gets destroyed, it's their own fault. And I agree. it's not going to be able to happen after that. When we get rid of all the stupid and weak people, survival of the fittest, surprise, surprise, our country is going to be a lot better off. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I have a lot of trouble disagreeing with with things that you say because they're things that I, you know, uh, for, for the most part, if not 100% agree with. Um, I have a couple other questions and, and you know, I want to say to my fans and, and your fans and followers that, you know, thank you for coming on and to you and uh, for chatting with I me. I want to do and a live show. A you, can ro you, can, you can roast me in front of everybody. And I'll Let's do and, it. If we, and if we charge for it, I want to donate the money to a charity. At Perfect. least my portion of it. We'll, do we'll donate it to the Ben Bankus Fund for um, continuation of communism in Canada. The uh, But the... Um, I had a couple other questions, one about Trudeau, one about what's going to happen next. And we'll just talk about that. We'll talk about Trudeau at the end because it'll be more fun. But because you do worry me, like I'll watch one of your videos. First of all, here, this is a roast for you that I, for the love of God, I hope you did buy a new phone because for a while you were using potentially the worst cell phone of all time like a nokia flip phone to make all of your videos and it almost made them scarier like this guy's really in a bunker like this is fucking terrifying <laughs> because like everything's grainy and stuff um but uh what like i'll watch one of your videos and i'll be like fuck what the fuck and then i'll have to talk to three other people after i watch your video to like be like no no he's he's out of his mind he's losing he's lost it you know people will say that to you all the time right and like i can see why like you're very passionate that's you know and you don't have a lot of like just chill but that's because you have all this energy and you're working out all the time and you have focus and you have goals and if you don't you get depressed and this is how you fight that depression and that's fucking commendable but what the fuck 
Like when you said the other day, you're like, they're going to bring back lockdowns and shit like that. And like my brain just goes, there's no fucking way because if that happens, I'm going to start doing something like I don't like, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say whatever I th in my head. I'm thinking that I would do if that happened. Why do you think that's I know that you saw that, like the West 49 thing got debunked, I think like uh, no, somebody somebody said that it was up there for two years. That's what, that's somebody, what said. somebody said. And then as soon as I pointed it out within an hour, they updated the page and took it down. So do you think that they left it on there for two years by mistake? A I don't know. Dollar company with an entire team dedicated to updating their website daily. With I new mean, West Forty Nine. West Forty Nine isn't exactly West Forty Nine isn't exactly the most popular store in the mall anymore. Um, There's still you know, a not... huge corporation that have an entire soul, entire team that looks after their webpage. Obviously, because as soon as I made that video, it just had like an Indian guy who's like, "Oh my god, I forgot." If... But like, I, I mean, I'm playing devil's advocate because I want, like, you know what I mean? Like, and this is healthy. Like, you ben, need somebody to ben, be like, Ben. If they were like that, if they were that inept, would they have saw my video and changed their website within an hour of me posting it? So if you, but um, so my question is, and I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying that's what I saw and I looked through it. And I'm just saying when I see your videos and a lot of people do this, they're trying to deb debunk you. Of course because, they are. But I believe the harsh truth. Well, well exactly. Okay, well, There's, it's scary. It's scary. Let's go, right? back, let's go back to the beginning of August. The beginning of August, I started my tour. Everyone's like, why are you starting your tour now? I went on Alex Jones and I said, I'm starting my tour now because unlike last year when they didn't do any COVID restrictions, this year they're going to bring all the COVID restrictions back. I said, they're going to start with mass mandates. And then I said, they're going to try to, uh, if we push back against the mass mandates, they're going to go with hard power and they're going to come after the kids, try to make the kids sick at school, and they're going to do another lockdown that way. So what happened? Within days of me mentioning it, they started bringing back mass mandates in colleges, hospitals, universities, schools, etc. Even the movie studio. We started a United Nations. And we don't hear about it. Like those, those, the websites that, you know, say we're bringing back masks, it's never advertised as like, it's not like the news is coming on going, we're bringing back masks. It's a very quiet thing, is what you're saying. Oh, right? really? Like it was quiet when Dr. Tam went on there with an N95 and told everybody to put their mask back on. Hey, and that you made me. that video making fun of it. Was that quiet or was that as blatant and in your face as you could possibly be? And then, like I said, they did the mask mandates. People started freaking out, so they pulled the mask mandates. And I said, watch out. They're going to close down the schools, and they're going to start making outbreaks at the schools. How did I know that? Because Bill Gates said so. He said the next pandemic, they're going to target the children to scare the people back into submission. So I just took what he said, and it made logical sense when everybody's not going to put a mask back on. But all of a sudden, if school kids start getting sick and hospitalized, you'll see how fast they put it on. So Within how are they getting people sick? Are they putting stuff into the, the, the I, air, air I conditioner? Video about this. I made a video. When I was in Las Vegas, I got called by a female journalist after hours because I was at the Rio Making America tour and she made me go meet her and she contacted her father, who's a mechanical engineer, and made me have a video, a video chat with him. He created a 193 page document that proved that the government not only has weaponized aerosol viral delivery systems, but actually deployed them into the HVAC systems of target buildings so they can specifically pick and choose exactly where they want outbreaks to occur so they can get the mass compliance. He brought this information. It was vetted by multiple PhD people in various uh, fields from mechanical engineering uh, to other fields. And when he brought it to the courts, he was arrested by intelligence agencies. His two daughters were kidnapped, raped, tortured, and sex trafficked. Where is this? Where is this? This was in the United States. One of his daughters is still missing. The other one I was with in Las Vegas, so she's obviously okay. And this man went public after that because I posted it on I posted it on my uh, Twitter. He's a he's a he's a black mechanical engineer. He's got a verified Twitter account, and he commented on the thread. And he told me I already warned people they were planning on closing down the schools. And he told me unequivocally that they're going to close down schools. They're going to plant these things in the HVAC systems of some of the schools. So when the kids go back. They get sick, and then they can bring back the lockdowns. Literally, within days of me telling people they're going to close down the schools, they closed down hundreds of schools in the United Kingdom, Scotland, United States, and Canada simultaneously. 
in the UK, they knew that, oh, they're built with faulty concrete. And now they said that same faulty concrete is at the two major airports. So now they have an excuse in the UK to shut down their airports and they have an excuse to shut down the schools, which they did. In the United I, States, I feel Canada, bad for whoever whoever's hotel room is next to you. <laughs> yeah, too bad for them. <laughs> they're just like trying, they're like Jesus Christ. <laughs> they're probably li- they're probably but listening. They're probably I would be listening, but no, like and you know this stuff is like I said, people's knee jerk reaction is please let it not be true. Same with like, well, I mean, I'll ask in a couple seconds what you thought of the. Uh, the Mexican alien thing, which I'm sure you think was obviously fake because it was extremely fake looking. It looked um, fake as fake as that. But you know what's funny? After that video, a teacher called me from the United States and said that they gave them alien invasion protocols in a staff meeting. Really? I swear on my life, this this woman called me. She was laughing her ass off. She thought it was hilarious, and she said, "Legit." They gave them alien invasion protocols at a, at a staff meeting. And she was wondering if hers was so the only thing that, that this it. is. I mean, like, I know I, I sorry to cut you off. I know that a lot of people believe that the alien thing is like a is like a Project Blue Beam. it's like a backup plan for if the other shit doesn't work, I guess. It's called like, Project Blue Beam. It's an actual thing. They, make, they even make jokes about it in uh, Family Guy and stuff. But if people look it up, that's what it is. It's right. basically a program that the U.S. came up with to try to make people think that there's a fake alien invasion because it's their, basically their last-ditch effort to get everyone under control. The only other way they could do it is with a real war. But they don't want to have a real war because a real war is going to destroy the city, destroy all the infrastructure that they used all of us in the last 100 years to build. They just want to get rid of us. They don't want to get rid of the infrastructure. That's why a virus is great because it kills us, leaves the building intact that's why project blue beam is great because it's going to give the world a way to unite against the common foe that doesn't even exist well i saw something really recently that was i mean a pretty major article i think it was like on the right the the mainstream news that was talking about how the people who are getting sick um now we're vaccinated covid we're vaccinated and but then that's not obviously that those articles aren't like elevated or you know made to be well it goes it goes in line with what what happened in the uk and no one knows this in the uk they published an article uh, a report number one that showed the people that had the most vaccines had the most covid hospitalizations and deaths and the people that had the most vaccines in all age categories had higher mortality or death rate from all causes than the people who are unvaccinated to the point where it is now illegal to get a COVID vaccine in the UK. Every single COVID vaccine in the UK is unavailable for purchase for any normal healthy person. You have to be over 65 years old or on one of their special immunocompromised lists to even be able to be eligible to purchase a COVID vaccine in the United Kingdom because they know how dangerous they are. And now, within the next week or two, they're going to reverse that because they're going to say we have a new vaccine that's safer and more effective. And guess what's going to happen? When everybody goes to take that jab, that's what's going to fuel the next outbreak. So what is is there any solution? It just sounds like we're fucked. And basically, um, we're not to deal with my my thing. I mean, this is my contribution is if I see somebody wearing a mask, I just make fun of them in public. Yes, me too. And you should publicly, uh, uh, you know, and and, uh, just be like, it's a shame on you, whatever. And I've I've done it a few times where I actually passed by somebody and I just went mask, mask, mask. And then they just take it off because yeah. they they think to themselves, "What the fuck? Why is I'm? Why am I doing this?" Um, so I guess that like is something. And you know, obviously, depending on what happens, I'm sure you're going to be potentially, I don't know, a part of whatever kind of pushback there is. I'm trying to choose my words a little bit wisely here because, buddy, God, I'm going to be. A- if they pull this shit again, I'm going to be the tip of the spear, and I'm going right for their asshole this time. Last time I went for their throats. This time I'm going to impale them. Well, I think a lot of people will be like I, I personally would want just want to have it. I think that the simplest um, protest now is just an anti Trudeau protest and just say he needs to resign. Let's start the protest. Do like a convoy. But just instead of being like we want our rights and da da da, resign, period. That's all we want. There's nothing else we want. And we will we want. But that won't wanna... solve the problem. It's not Trudeau. It's coming from everywhere. Doug Ford's going to lock down a thing. He's conservative. 
They're going to try to lock down BC. It has nothing to do with Trudeau. Trudeau is just a puppet. So if this doesn't happen, what, like, like, what, what, what is this because of this India thing where there's this new virus in India, the Nef, Nefertiti Nipah virus? virus. Not, they, bro, every single day I'm making a new worldwide alert video, and that's because these people are literally trying to throw everything they can at the wall and see what sticks. Just like with monkeypox. Do they have to start and, these diseases in these kind of shittier countries, like it, it, like in, in India? Because then it's like more believable that it's like, there was a bat and it touched the wing of an asshole of a pig and then the pig fucked a turtle and then I well, ate not it. Just that, not just that, it's the, it's the fact that Ch India and China both have like 1.5 billion people, so it's a great place to start spreading a disease because you have the most number of people with the with with the highest population density and they're, they're and traveling the most location. right they have the most flights most flights thank going you that's what i was getting that's the last thing i was going to say because they have the most flights to spread it around easiest well i i mean personally i hope that um you know we just continue to go back to normal which obviously is not going to happen uh, and i think this is the right time frame for i mean the sad part is i've talked to some business owners and comedy and bars and they've really said to me like this you know they said the roaring 20s were going to happen and it is like for a lot of businesses right now they are killing it again um so i and they're going to put the stranglehold back on them and that's we just have to not comply we have to pull a serbia everybody's got to get in the streets get with their neighbors and simply say we're not gonna do it and, that, that and that'll be enough so here, I'll ask, we'll change the subject for a bit before we get out of here, but this, is, this has been a great time, great podcast, and um, I do want to ask about Trudeau because he's had some scandals, I mean, obviously tons of scandals, but recently there's been some, some softer scandals that, you know, he dodges like, uh, like he's in the Matrix because he's very good at dodging scandals somehow. Well, he, it's easy to dodge scandals when you have the entire... Media, media system work, working for you, you and all that and and then when you shut down the ability for said media to put um all their their stuff online which you know by the way i just want to say that obviously like the, P the the independent journalists are hit the hardest and then they want to pretend like oh my god what are we going to do about ctv news people getting laid off so there is that happening right where the corporations aren't necessarily seeing the profits they want to by going along with the government do you think that there is a bit of like infighting in like why have they the toronto star and other news companies just recently fired hundreds if not thousands of employees a lot of them were woke journalists that were writing those anti or pro vaccine articles and and, and to be about honest how they're just they, they, all of their if you look at how the government operates they say they don't they don't uh they don't pay the media to influence content. But if you look, the government virtually pays the salaries for everybody in all of the media companies. So they don't tell them which content to make, they say, but they pay all their workers. So obviously they get to tell them which content to make. And why don't they want to pay their workers? Because A, they don't have money, and B, they don't need to. Now they can use the AI programs to write most of those articles. And the AI programs aren't going to have a conscience. They'll lie to the people and say whatever the hell they want. So why the hell are you going to have thousands and thousands of journalists that you have to pay and you have to worry about controlling when you can just have a okay. few that you really know you can trust and then have the AI program do the rest? I agree with that. But so my question is with Trudeau getting a divorce. I mean, that was obviously hilarious for me. Um, I thought it was very funny that he got a divorce. And obviously his father, I think, was divorced already or got a divorce during or got he was like single at one point, just out there yeah. having his, you know, his biological father, quote unquote. Um, you know, I know, I don't know if you believe the Fidel Castro thing or I 100% believe that because I, I saw flight logs and they were definitely in Cuba before Justin was born. His mom is definitely a friggin' she whore. was a hoe, she was a big hoe, definitely yeah. all over Castro in pictures. And he looks literally like a friggin' clone of Castro and absolutely nothing so like it's in his blood. Like if, if that's, I agree with that. I mean, if it is, I mean. In some ways, I agree with that. He looks more like his mother, people say, or the people who. Yeah, don't right. Believe. That's what the, <laughs> she. Uh, she, by the way, if you look at inter watch interviews with her from like whenever the eighties or whatever, she just she seemed like she almost seemed like these these TikTok whores now, but in in kind of a smarter way. She's worse than the TikTok whores. She she was like the biggest whore in the seventies. She was part of like sex parties, doing acid, 
she cheated on Pierre Trudeau with uh, Ringo Starr from the uh, from the Rolling Stones, and it was like national news, and it was a big scandal. And then as soon as they got over that scandal, she went and begged Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones, and it was national news again. Right. She's just a straight up hoe. Period. She she was also, to be fair, he show. also had sex with some like. Pierre Elliott also had some notable partners, I believe. Um, of course, but, uh, of course. But, when you're based, which, when you're with a woman like that, she's not to. even there half the time because she's having sex with someone else. You're going to be too. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we've we've all been um, in those positions at one point or another. But um, the <laughs> Pierre. Uh, so, but my question is, was this divorce just fake? Was it was it because a lot of people say, oh, they were already not together. They were separated. Not- they were separated from a long time ago. And I believe she just finally couldn't take it anymore. And because they know that he's going to be out anyway, he's not going to win another term. They kept her around because they knew that he was going to win again and they needed her for the image. So now that she knows that he's done politically, it was finally time. That so she you could do just think so you do think Trudeau's on the way out. But then the 100% question is guaranteed. But he's you got think no, that if. Got- He's got no trust left with the people, so he's got no leeway to put, to push their agenda. So they're going to put Pierre in charge because the people are going to listen to him. And then, guess what? As soon as Pierre becomes in power, all the same shit that Trudeau wanted to do are going to become wonderful ideas. Because everybody says, oh, he's against digital ID, he's against digital currency. In February 2021, right before he went to the trucker convoy, pretended to be a conservative to take over the party, He was the vice chair of the Emergency Financial Committee for COVID. And their very first two recommendations were digital ID and digital currency. And then he became the leader of the Conservative Party three weeks later. And then two months later, when he was questioned about that, and they took him off the World Economic Forum website, where he was shown as a member and an attendee, all of a sudden he's against digital ID and digital currency, where he literally wrote the paper advocating for it not even months before. So he's a fake... do you think there's a benefit of the doubt where it's like, you know, he changed his mind. He maybe was it was more at the beginning of the pandemic and he th- wasn't thinking about it in the conspiratorial way, says, because digital ID, if we didn't have COVID and we didn't have all these crazy things and everything wasn't so devious and awful. I mean, people would go digital ID. Who gives a shit? Everything's great. We're fine. Everybody's rich. Nobody cares. Blah, blah, blah. The reason it's so fucked up is because of the lockdowns and shit, right? No, so, digital ID. No? They were trying to push digital ID way before the lockdowns, buddy. They've been trying to push digital ID from like 2015 in the United States. And people just were against it because they knew exactly how it could be used against them in a situation like COVID. And then they used COVID as a way to try to make an excuse to use it. But all they really did was show people exactly why it's so dangerous and why they can never happen because they're exactly going to use it to abuse us and screw us. But, bro, I got to run because I got I an you. appointment at 5 we, o'clock. We, we got to go, too. I have a spin class. I'm, I'm trying to lose weight. You're an inspiration to us all. I love uh, you, brother. Both uh, physically, mentally. Um, my, I, I'd say I want to hear a speech. I, I'd almost be more scared of what you're saying if you didn't yell <laughs> as much. <laughs> like, I want to hear you do an ASMR talk just with saying the same stuff. Like, it'd be so much scarier, right, if you're just like, and then really? Pierre's going to come in and Pierre's going to do this. But I, I don't know what to believe other than um, I don't think we're moving in the best direction now. Hopefully, Pierre is better than Trudeau. Hopefully, that hopefully all this stuff goes away and everybody can be prosperous. You are a very interesting guy, and, and a lot of Canadians really appreciate you. And, you know, you have haters. All, the, all, all interesting people have haters. So keep doing what you're doing. Oh, best I, of I, luck I on your tour. Before I leave, everybody sent me the, the clip of you roasting me, and they're like... Oh, can you believe Ben Ben was talking shit about you? He was making jokes about you. I'm like, let me see what he said. And I watched it and I laughed the whole time. And I was like, but that's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to make fun of people. But yeah, but he's making fun of you. I'm like, yeah, but it's funny. (laughs) That's I mean, that is one of the dangers of people on the right is that they and what may happen is we may just create a new dictatorship where we go, well, you guys had your left wing dictatorship. We're going to do the right wing one. And that's not necessarily the best thing for freedom either. But and you recognize that, which is great. But, uh, you know, once again, we've got to let you go. You you very, very uh, happy to have you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for laughing at my jokes. I know that your lips are real, by the way. I said that you the only time you use a needle is to put them in your lips. But um, I, I don't know what's what. Tell us before you leave. Are the lips real? Are the teeth real? 
is there have you had any plastic surgery uh, I can tell, or, I, I, the, the only thing on me that's fake is my hair it's obviously not blonde i dye my hair my teeth are not veneers anybody can tell if a teeth is veneer very simple by looking at the bottom and all the teeth will be even and flat if you look at my teeth you can see that there's a curve there. I went to Columbia and got a special procedure called smile design where they whiten your teeth and then they put a very thin layer, like a white coating over your natural teeth. So it simply takes whatever your teeth look like before and makes them whiter and brighter. So That's yeah, nice. they're, no, they're not veneers. My lips are obviously not fake. I literally posted a baby picture of myself from when I'm like four I years old. That. My lips take up half of that. my head. It's it's it's, it's like, very it's hilarious. And I think that when you're back in Canada, let's you know, I want you to come to a live show. Even it'd be cool if you came on for a couple of minutes, roast me, um, you know, or whatever, and and we just do a thing because uh, I'm you know, 100 down. I think it would be amazing. We got to make yes. fun of this shit. People yes. underestimate how important comedy is. That's why Making I have so fun much respect of for you. Making fun of you and then you laughing at it gives you credibility to do what you are, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Whereas if you were like, yo, I don't I hate Ben Bankus now and he shouldn't be allowed to do then then that's totally crazy. And you're you're on the same side as those guys. But anyway, either way, I'm not be against your freedom of speech just because you're talking about me. That would kind of make me a biggest hypocrite walking in the face of the earth, would it not? True. But you, you're not you're not a hypocrite. Um, and for the for from what we learned today, you love the Jews, just not the certain Jews, which nobody likes, and uh, because they're. I love you, and you're Jewish. Yeah, well, I'm half. So that's why I'm likable. Oh um, but, man, uh, that's why I like you. Then it's the it's not half. That's true. <laughs> but uh, Chris, you're the man. Keep killing it, and uh, get home, get back to Canada safe, and uh, stay safe, because it sounds like. Um, Everybody in the world is doesn't doesn't like you. I mean, the people with power. So, um, but keep doing your thing, man. Love you, brother. Thank you so much. Can't wait to Take see care. you. Cheers. Right. See you soon. Bye bye.